Imagine a driver priced below that £300 UK bracket. One that looks incredibly good in terms of shelf appeal and also performs. Wilson got to be onto a winner, haven't they? Yeah, having just got over a near fatal heart attack because that ball came so close to going through that lens you're now watching me on. Wow, that was close. We've decided to move the camera to the right hand side and don't get so cocky and in the future. Get my breath back, but back to the D9 driver. I think first of all, you've seen in the intro clips there that uh, this is, I think the best looking driver that uh, Wilson have released. I think it's, uh, I kind of like the kind of dark. I'm not one for these bright and bold colors. You've probably heard me say in recent reviews, but I think they've just done an incredibly good job of it visually and far better than, like I said, anything I've seen from Wilson for the last few years. Uh, massive uh, box ticked. And then you look at it from the crown and again, they've done this, um, it's become fairly commonplace, this sort of carbon uh, imprint in the back of their head and that fades out towards the face. But again, just looks incredibly good quality. And I think what you've got to say is, going back to the intro clip about the price point, this driver is listed at 299 RRP, so it's arguably going to sell for less than that. So straight away, when you see the list price, you're starting to question the build quality, starting to question perhaps how it looks. And it does dismisses that straight away. As soon as you look at it, I've got to say, hats off to Wilson. They've produced an incredibly good looking club. And the standard shaft as well is the tent size shafts, which again, very, very good shaft. And again, put it back into that price bucket. And that's a major thing they've got going very well. But then it's all about performance. I've already collected quite a bit of data. And like I said, we've almost smashed the camera lens once, but I'll... Uh it's a decent ball as well. Solid, straight, well done, and pretty much like the last one. I just, uh, yeah, got that nearly wrong. But sound, again, you've just heard that ball. Hopefully you can pick it up sometimes off the microphone. We've got a great balance in terms of the sound. It's, uh, I, I struggled with it the other week. Not too soft, not too loud. It's just that nice balance between uh, the two. That one kind of came off the top half of the face, still did extremely well. So I'm gonna get some balls and get testing. But again, the question I want from you is comments down below. I mentioned it, or it depends when this comes out in relation to the irons. The price point is a major thing that Wilson have got going for them here. How many of you gonna try this driver based on where it's pitched in on price? Is that what is drawing you to it? Let me know in the comments box. I've said before on Wilson Reviews that uh, they don't go overboard on the marketing and uh, some of you like that idea, but I like to have a little bit of story in terms of the technical spec that's gone into the build of the drivers. But in this instance, like I said, very limited. What they've uh, the sort of focus on is this new face, which is their PKR face. And I'm gonna read from the tech data that I've been set from, sent from Wilson. Uh, it divides the face into a series of fractal zones, fine tuning every millimeter of the surface to deliver explosive distance and performance. That's about as much as I've got to feedback, I'm afraid, in terms of technical spec. In terms of the head itself, there are a few things that you can do in terms of, well, one thing that you can do in terms of adjustability, and that's change around the weight that's positioned at the back. It comes as standard in a 10 gram weight, but you can switch that out to a three gram weight. So that would perhaps make it a little bit more uh, less, uh, lower spinning rather. Then the one other thing to mention is shaft options. It is fairly limited. I did mention in the intro clip that they're doing the 10 side blue shaft and it's available in three options. The A, which is effectively the soft flex at 50 gram. Regular is also a 50 gram shaft and the stiff is a 60 gram stiff shaft. There are no other options or variables outside of that. So there are limitations for your money. But anyway, how do we get on? Let's get in some golf balls and back to four golf. In terms of performance, what I'm seeing from it, um, We'll look at dry ball data, but I have seen a few numbers. I'm not quite getting the numbers out of it. It's falling just a little bit short in terms of performance, but we'll, like I said, I'll show you the detail of that later on. It's kind of a bit 
bit frustrating because, like I said, the club is sounding well, it's performing well in terms of its dispersion, but in terms of where it's getting to, perhaps just a little bit spinny in terms of where we're at, and obviously we could change things around, certainly in terms of uh, the shaft to have some impact on that. That's all I'm noticing so far from inside the driving range. Unfortunately, can't take this out on the course right now and give you some more feedback. Go back to the initial question again. I talked about price. How many of you are owning uh, Wilson drivers and how many of you are considering trying this? I'm really interested to know um, this thing between brand sort of uh, placements, where it sits, Wilson right now, again, won more majors than any other brand. Where is it sitting right now, fellas? There was a real comeback with the, uh, with the kind of Forge line, incredibly impressive on the irons. But where does it sit in terms of the woods? Because if I'm honest with you, from a visual perspective, like I said, in terms of how this looks, this is the first one that has caught my eye in terms of, you know, this is a big step forward, I think, in terms of product design. Could do with a few more uh, yards for me personally with the setup I've got right now. Uh, but yeah, your opinion. Once again, I love to get feedback. And uh, at the end of the day, ultimately, you're the people that are going to go out there and possibly buy this club. Right, golf ball's hit. And like I said, it's unfortunate I haven't been able to take this out on the course, but it is what it is. And uh, we'll work with what we've got. And that is this dry ball data that I'll throw up in front of you now with some averages. Always in and around sort of 96, 10, perhaps 98 mile an hour in terms of club head speed. Carry 229, height of 79, 145 ball speed, land angle 37, 10.2 launch, 3356 spin. Now, the numbers in themselves are relatively low. Like I said, it seemed to be a little bit spinny. I mentioned that it certainly is at 3356 spin, not the best of launch angles at 10.2. The ball speed was actually quite good, but that combination of launch and spin rate is not producing a great carry. So we end up with that 229. I just want to throw you that up in terms of a comparison because we always, th this thing is focused on, a lot of this is going to be about um, putting this product into a price category and balancing price between that and performance. So I'm going to bring up a driver that is top end in terms of market price, and that's the Callaway Epic 21 that's just been released. Look at the data that we produce off 96.6 club head speed. 11 yards additional carry, difference in peak height, different ball speed, but different spin number and a whole different launch angle. That's fantastic. And yes, the Epic did better. And I feel that we probably could get better out of the Wilson Club. The way we do that is we'd need to change the loft on the head and we'd need to change the shaft. And they would have a significant um, impact on both the things that we've seen an issue with, which effectively was launch and spin. But well, the fact is, we can't do that because there's no adjustability and there's no option in terms of the shafts. So that's a real major issue. And I think it goes back to like what I said earlier. What do you want from your driver? Are you prepared to say, well, look, I'm going to spend 250 quid, which is what I think it'll sell for in the UK. I'm going to save myself in the case of that between that and the Epic 21, you're 200 pound better off in your pocket. But you've got a product that is not optimal for your own performance, what you can get out of it. Are you prepared to sacrifice that 11 yards, the higher spin number, the lower launching ball? Do you wanna give up all those things and put money in your pocket? And it is as simple as that, because the fact is, this driver looks really, really good. I, I love the way it's been put together. It looks like a quality build. It's got a quality component in the 10 size shaft, but that's where it ends. After that, there are issues that have clearly highlighted there in the data, and they're the restrictions that are put on you. And I wouldn't want to kid anybody by saying, you know, this is a fantastic driver, it's brilliant, it's good for everybody. It's not. It will work for some, but it certainly won't work for everybody. And I think if you're lucky, you might get yourself the perfect fit and match between that shaft, head, loft combination. But a lot of you, and in my case, I think would be me, it hasn't suited, and there are far more, there's gains to be made in other drivers. But like I said, I understand that's the compromise that, uh, you know, as I always say in these videos, affordability is a big, big thing. And how you decide to spend your money is entirely up to you. So you might prefer to make the sacrifice of that bit of yardage and save the money. I don't know. It's, uh, I'm a little bit, like I said in the review, a little bit disappointed because honestly, in terms of how it sounded and felt, how I 
played with the club, it was really, really good. I had no issues with it. But I knew just visually when I was hitting balls in the range, it wasn't quite doing it in terms of performance, and that bore out in the numbers. So um, I think it always goes back to the initial thing. Some people come into the channel and comment that maybe custom fit isn't uh, necessarily needed. Maybe there's also a comment that all driver heads are the same. And, and to that, I, I agree to a degree, but you've got to remember, this is just highlighted. That is only to a certain point. And then there becomes some um, other issues that impact on that performance. And like I said, there are limitations with this club, I'm afraid to say. But um, on every other level, like I said, they've done a fantastic job, but not quite got it there in terms of performance. And if you're going to pitch yourself in and play with the big boys, if you like, in terms of driver sales, then they're going to have to broaden that adjustability and that, uh, the shaft options, I'm afraid. That's my thoughts anyway. Uh, but only my thoughts, and more importantly, I suppose, as ever, what are yours? Stick your comments down in the box below. Um, hit the uh, thumbs up button, I think I need to say. Subscribe if you don't already. And uh, have a good day. We'll be back. I think this is, when is this one going out? So this is going out Friday. So I'll see you Monday.